sure. I think the sunrise out here is rather beautiful, especially when it's illuminating a member of the Angama Pride. Although, no disrespect meant to our sugar, which I think is gorgeous. Our sunrise sugar. So there we go. The Angama Pride, not all that difficult to find at the moment, because of course they've got the young cubs that they den in this lugger or drainage line that runs basically very, very close to the road that comes down off the mountain. Right, let's go get a little bit closer, see what she's seen. She's seen something. I'm trying to work out if she's seen another lion. Or if she saw something or heard something in the grass. Morning, girl. I wonder which one this is. Let's see if we can have a closer look. Maybe I can work it out. I know what the mother of the youngest cubs looks like. And I think this might be her. No, it's not. Now, the Angamas have proved to be probably the lions that we see the most often. I don't think it's particularly difficult to guess why. They're right outside of our camp. What's there, girl? What do you see that I don't? She's listening as well. I can't see anything immediately apparent. No, relaxed again. Well, I think the plan for the morning will be to go and see if we can find the different members of the Angama Pride. It's been interesting observing them, especially obviously right the way through the night. The other evening was a lesson in their behavior and the way that they never are never too far away from their cubs, which makes complete sense with the number of hyenas out here. But every time they fail a hunting attempt, they rest for a little bit and then they go back to the cubs. And they spend some time with them. And then they take them with them for a little bit, the older cubs at least. They take them with them for a little bit, then they stash them, and then they try again. And of course, with ten hungry mouths to feed, they're constantly, constantly on the lookout for food. She's seen something. there. No. Nope. Moving along down into the very, very steep drainage line. The one that is impossible to cross. Our last night, no, not last night, I'm getting my nights confused given that I'm often asleep during the day. Two nights ago, we followed them, we watched them try and miss three times, but the fourth time was when they were successful and the fourth one was when they completely pulled the wool over my eyes. They did just arrived back at the cubs, I was rejoicing because I'd found them again, because they'd I'd lost them for the third time that night, and then all of a sudden they shot off at great speed, and I just couldn't keep up. And by the time I found them again, they had already partially devoured their zeb kill. What are you looking for, girl? The rest of the pride or your cubs? Our Kerry, very good question, and I don't think it has been answered as our lioness walks right next to us. Terry, sorry Terry. Terry, you want to know if it rains and the lugger fills up, and by the way, she's still empty bellied, she hasn't eaten. Or if she has, she hasn't eaten much. What have you seen, girl? She's right, let me tuck my head down. Terry, they move the cubs up out of the drainage. Uh, that's all that they have to do. And the cubs will instinctively move. Cubs do drown. Especially if the if the rain comes down very hard and there's basically a flat flood, essentially. It does happen that cubs drown, but most of the time their instincts will take them up, up out of the drainage line and often underneath the bushes surrounding it. Look at the focus in her eyes. She's seen something behind me. I think she's actually using me as cover. Yeah, the lions might be ah, who suggests that the other lions might be behind us in the road? She doesn't look prey intent, you're right, she looks lion intent. I keep bopping my head into the frame, I'm sorry, I'm trying to look behind us. But I can't see. Oh, we'll just wait. Obviously I can't switch on the vehicle now, given that she has been so very confiding. This is not a mother of cubs. This must be the fourth lioness. What have you seen, my girl? Must be other lions. 
Okay, I'm going to put my head into frame for a second, before which I do apologise in advance. Oh, never mind. There you go. Sidling right past the vehicle. There she goes. These lines just as comfortable with vehicles as the ones in the sands. All right. No, she's seen something. Chitty Chatty Meg, you want to know if we're in any danger here? We're not. We're not at all. Obviously, they are wild animals and we treat them as such. The biggest danger is driving into the slugger at this point. Or the ground collapsing underneath me. No, we're not in any danger. We treat them with respect. Obviously, all of us have been doing this for many years, so we are very aware. She's going to go. She's definitely seen something. I'm going to stop there, Viam. Are you okay with that? I'm worried she's going to pounce soon. She's definitely seen something in the bushes. It could be a warthog, something that I can't see. Okay, let me move. I just was worried she was going to... 20 point turn! There she goes. Okay, happy Vim? We got enough. I'm just scared of missing the moment. Here she goes. She's definitely seen something. Okay, let's go with her. Got enough space to turn. Liz, a very, very good question. Liz would like to sort of know about whether or not we ever get used to, um, or she knows that we, we of us get used to having the lions so close to us, but does it ever get our heart, hearts racing? Liz, it does absolutely still, to this day. Uh, not when she's next to me during the day, but I find especially at night. Uh, the other night we had one of the dominant males of this area walk past me in the dark, and I mean, his head was... It's not exaggerate, but his head was here, right next to mine. And although it's, it's rationally, I know it's absolutely fine, instinctively, there is a part of me that knows. There's a ranger coming up behind me. Let's just check where he is. There's a part of me that responds instinctively. Some primal part of me that knows that at one point, lions would have eaten my ancestors. And especially at night when, morning, morning, when lions are a very different animal to the one that they are during the day. She's still looking for something. I haven't seen anything. But she's still intent and she's using the barrier of the road to keep herself hidden. Vim, does your heart race? <laughs> there was a moment the other night where Vim and I were out all night, not the last one, the time before, and we both accidentally nodded off at around about two o'clock in the morning after the Angamas had killed that zebra. Pops, keep popping her head up. She's definitely seen something that we haven't. Here she goes, right next to the Angama vehicle sidling past. I bet that gets the heart rate of the guests racing. And Viam suddenly sat up with a jolt and there was a lioness right next to his head. She wasn't doing anything except relieving herself, but I think it was sufficient surprise. I'm going to keep following this lioness and find out where she's going. Let's find out what Scott's plans are for the morning.